Franny, no. Franny, no. You guggle potty later. I'm on I'm on I'm on the internet. It's it's anytime with Ken and Alden, Franny. You gotta go outside. And it's Friday, and we're here. I got a chihuahua literally whining at my door saying it's time to go potty. But you know what, Alden? No potties. I'm Ken, you're Alden. How you doing, buddy? No potties. I, I went potty before this. I also have a dog here. He's actually in the room. And he, but he's, he, he, he understands the podcast life. I almost think yeah. I should put a camera on his little crate and maybe that'll <laughs> cause a view spike. Mando cam? People love cute little animals. Yeah. Uh, they do. I do. I, I wish Franny would behave, your, behave herself. She, she doesn't like behaving herself. She doesn't understand that's, the stream in life, man. Yeah. That's the Chihuahua way, though. I've, mm-hmm. I've had quite a few Chihuahuas in my lifetime. Uh, me, yep. my mom, my stepdad, my sister, but we've had maybe six or seven over the years, and they are uniquely ornery and yeah, and it, it very fiercely independent. Oh, yeah, no, I they're my they're I've, I've had dachshunds, poodles, not a lot of big dogs in my life as uh, with either mm-hmm. family or now, but uh, chihuahuas might have been my favorite, are, are my favorite right now. I mean, I, don't tell Franny I said otherwise, love dachshunds, but uh, yeah, they're a special breed, anyways. Welcome to Dog Chat. All yeah. those responsible, responsible pet owner. Uh, anytime with Ken and Alden today, I'm not going to say it's going to be different, Alden. We've we got some of the segments you love. One segment I completely forgot about. It's going to be the return of the inner intergenerational game where you and I are going to try to stump each other. And yes. we're going to have, I don't want to call it loose some more fun. Last week we had a revolution. Thank you all who listened. Thank you all who commented, even though a lot of you might not have agreed with some of the opinions, but that's okay. That's the point of it, uh, point of the show. But uh, this week, I'm talking long here to set up the fact, Alden, that it's just uh, we're going to we're gonna tee it high and let it fly today. Well, I love the tee it high and let it fly philosophy, especially when it comes to topics that, frankly, not to pat ourselves on the back, but you and I don't need to prep for, usually. Um, <laughs> it is, yeah, I mean, last week, everybody mm-hmm. that joined us for the Dorina one, it is thus far the most interacted with and viewed episode on this new channel so everybody mm-hmm. thanks for joining us again on the new channel continue to share and yeah. subscribe and all that stuff and we love Darina and she's going to be back again DJ Bruja and uh, that episode was the Friday and Saturday we did a little crossover guesting on yeah. a certain point of view with Jill and Molly on their happy mm-hmm. hour show and we got blitzed uh, at least I yeah. did yeah. Uh, I I absolutely did. I yeah. so people people saw the the bottle of rum that I left in the in the kitchen, and I, I had yeah. questions coming my way. Um, yeah. we held yeah. it together though. So no, no, yeah. we did, we did, we didn't embarrass ourselves too much. No, they they, they no. host a good show. Alex yeah. was his cheeks were all rosy red. They've been day drinking, so we held our own. It was good. Yeah, it was good. But love, check it out. Love those folks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Today though, it is as I tweeted the nineteenth edition of this show. Um, yeah. which is wild already we're heading toward mm-hmm. 20 episodes and and yet and even though it comes up all the time credit to us i think for not again, doing a star again. wars focus more okay. back padding for not doing a star wars focus episode until this point and it and, all, and it, yeah. it took a lot it, we needed a whole ass new star wars mm-hmm. thing so yeah. it's yeah so we're gonna do the nerd thing today that people somewhat know us for yeah yeah true in this true. in this format though in this way yeah and you know deep dives uh, go to octal radio for deep dive interviews go to force center for uh, joseph and i did this the acolyte trailer was what minute 45 seconds or something uh, we yeah. did two hours live on on the deep dive there so that's there but there's some things i want to talk about that maybe i a little more cautious and careful about on force center a little bit of around you know this is uh, of one of the most yes. watched star wars trailers in a while it's also one of the most disliked uh not unlike uh you know ghostbusters 2016 and some of the other things in the past mm-hmm. so we'll get into that mm-hmm. uh all that stuff and yeah we're getting into our first segment but also you know with this this show as it evolves, as it just comes from our own hearts, you know, this was a place that I also wanted to talk about news and the news segment. I started this new gig, and I got to be honest, it's just it's kicking my ass in a good way. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Um, so we're trying to balance things out. But I do uh, we're going to get to the first segment, Alden, but I do want to address that I am tracking the live updates on Marjorie Taylor Greene filing a surprise motion to oust Speaker Mike Johnson in anger over the government funding <laughs> bill that was reached earlier today. <laughs> it's, it's honestly fantastic. Um, in the worst way 
<laughs> you've got to be a special kind of uh, uh, just you got to be a special kind. Let's just say I'll stop any other words after that. You got a special kind for me to actually have some sort of empathy for Mike Johnson. Like, I mean, it's one percent. But like and also with Mike Johnson, you this is like you're a snake handler and the snake bit you. Like, are you shocked here? Are you shocked? It's pretty great. It's, it's as if great. like it's like when multiple Batman villains appear in the same arc. <laughs> and they think they can work together maybe for a little bit, but they can't. Yes. They can't coexist. Not can't. those insane personalities, the, the criminally insane. Like yeah. they can't. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. It, it's it's great. And I love it. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of news sources. Uh you, BBC, yeah, I go to there a lot. But I, I, CNN has the live updates, which reads as like almost like a live tweet. Um, and then I and look and look, I always say Democrats are politicians, too. They're they're here to negotiate and play the games as well, whether we love that or not. The l most recent headline 17 minutes ago, Democrats are signaling they'll save Mike Johnson if he moves on the Ukraine aid. Uh, and I kind of like that they're going to hold that over him. You help us. We'll save you. We'll save you. And then that will piss off the snake handlers even more. Yes. It's just it's just fun. Yeah, I mean, like, look. I mean, fun because there's so many lives at stake, but it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun in the sense that you love to see awful people mm. have a breakdown. Like, yeah. there is nothing more powerful in the human experience than, as the Germans call it, schadenfreude, where schadenfreude. you have mm. the pleasure that you get from the misfortune of others. And, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. who doesn't want to see that? We've, we've worked in office settings with people that right. drove us a little crazy, and then you see yeah. that person trip and fall or drop their shit and whatever, a little, yeah. a little spark a little spark yeah. in, the, in the fiber of your being. I love that. I love that there. So we're going to keep track of that. I'm going to call out one of my friends. I'm going to call out one of my friends, King Sport Cal. He says, well, Alden updated his glasses. Get with the times, bro. Alden is the hip one, Cal. See, you, and I, you and I are in our 40s. Alden's wearing glasses that the kids would consider hip because they're from our youth. Cal, what Cal doesn't realize, Cal, is Cal. that there are multiple Alden anytime glasses that get mm. worn. There are mm. also blue ones that I haven't worn in a while and oh, really, yeah. really much like thicker, much thicker uh, giant ones that I have with more on the way. So I love that. I love that. Don't don't think I don't think about it. <laughs> Kingsport Cal, if that is your real legal first name. It's it's not. It's it's Kingsport. Kingsportian. <laughs> it's Kingsportian Cal. Kingsport. Uh, I, you know, I love speaking of politics. And again, we'll get to our first segment. Don't you worry, folks. Uh, Scotty J. Rose says, uh, I do the same thing with <laughs> shitty students. I love that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a junior high teacher, right? Scotty's junior high. What, what, what grade? Middle school for Scotty me? Scotty now now has a combination. I think he used to be just middle school and now has elementary and middle. Oh, God. Even better that someone who has to deal with 10 year olds is like, oh, I can apply the same thing to them to the Republican uh, house right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, oh, his yeah, Kingsport Cal. Who, by the way, I love Kingsport Cal. I'm teasing him, Calvin. Yeah, I know that. We Calvin. had a good conversation. I'm taking live calls on my blathering show now on my regular channel. Uh, I'm opening up the phone lines, Alden. It's That's risky. Fun. It's always it's risky. Fun. Risky uh, but fun. And then and one thing about the pet. I saw this. Uh, I saw this wonderful uh, comment from our buddy Eric Monroe. The only pet I ever had, sadly, was a hermit crab from Atlantic City. That is the start of a children's <laughs> <What>? book. <laughs> What? If I've ever seen one. Yeah, I love that. Like a hermit crab hermit crabs already have a, a connotation of being like a lonely person pet. Yeah. Not a shot up you you, Eric, of course. I had one as well. Um mm -hmm. I got it from the Pembroke Lakes Mall. Um but the go. yeah, it's a from Atlantic City is like, is this hermit crab like is he owe people money? Like That's Bruno good, Mars? Yeah. Did you uh, see that? Yeah, I saw that. We got a lot. Oh, I wow. just dropped my, my fake cigarette pencil. Um, oh, it's, um, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of gambling this week. Shohei Itani and all that stuff going on. We can dive in a little bit later if we want to. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Bruno Mars, man. 50 million? Was it 50, 50 million? 50 million dollars in casino debt, which honestly, as somebody put it, like, and honestly, this would be something to talk to Joseph Scrimshaw about because he knows a yeah. lot about like the the old the old guys the old, the old the old gambling does the old crooners and you know all that era yeah. it's like someone goes he's a song and dance man and and he owes he owes casino money and now he'll probably do a residency to pay it off like yeah. he's on the path this yeah. is this, this is, is the it. greatness this yep. is this, this is legend he and he and Dino. I uh, love that there. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, we are going to dive into uh, stuff as we always do, but we, we can't go deeper into the show without asking ourselves this important question, Alden. Uh, what Ben Affleck are we? 
So there's a science to picking Ben Affleck uh, mm-hmm. photos on this show. And and sometimes it's ba- it's like I find the topic first. We discuss what we're going to do. And then I think, has Ben ever been through something like this? And oh, yeah. he, so, so for this one, I went to, and again, for the benefit of the podcast listener, I will describe it. It is 2014 Ben Affleck um, <laughs> as they were gearing up with this new, at the time, new DC extended universe. And you got Zack Snyder out of focus talking about, Mm. I don't know, how he thinks he understands those characters. And then we have over here Ben Affleck. And it's like, he took the job. He's happy to be there, I'm sure. It's nice to get applause. But you could tell he zoned out for just a split second. (laughs) He like, And so it's like, much like how this show is going to do a geeky episode today (laughs) with an undercurrent of reality. That's what I think Ben Affleck was doing. Even before he suited up as Batman, like, this is right when he got the role, and he's already kind of like, "Why am I here?" Yeah, Boopenheim says Zack Snyder is permanently out of focus. What I love about, yeah, yeah, exactly. This is when you're like hanging with a friend, or maybe you're on a, a friend's podcast, not this one, and and the host starts doing something, and you're just like, you have that look in your face of like, "Why am I here?" Oh no, I'm here. Oh, I got to get through this. Why did I do this? What? Did I yeah, do this? I could be playing Baldur's Gate. I could be eating pizza. <laughs> like, why? I, and instead, I decided to talk about I don't know the same episode for the fourth time. <laughs> Maddie Very got hard. our chat says, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. Yeah, yeah, and started. that's exactly what the ethos of his whole DC run was. Yeah, you're probably wondering how I got here. How I got here. Um, so love you, I. man. Really great. Good stuff. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, <laughs> we're we're gonna take a, a I am look. Skiing. At- uh, yeah, I'm seeing Kate Middleton in the comments. Did they finally release a statement, or or is Dylan just asking? Is, is Are you asking saying, if hey, we know what's up with we, her? Do we know? I don't. I don't. I I I went a fresh haircut today. I went and got my haircut this morning, and uh, oh god. Okay, well, no, yeah, not jokey. Uh, she's announced that she has cancer. Okay, I'm gonna click on the oh story my here. Live. God. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was getting my haircut this morning. The guy was asking me, and I was like, I look. I think it's probably. There's no conspiracy. There's probably something really bad. And uh, yeah. All right. Uh, early stages of treatment. Diagnosed with cancer. I do not know uh, what it was. Yeah, because my guy this morning was like, he's like, I think it's a tummy tuck. I'm like, what? I, no. Like, th- th- come on. Yeah. Um, non-cancer. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I'm looking at Surgery it successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer and had been present. So it was Good. an abdominal surgery. Non-cancer they found cancer. Medical team therefore finds that shouldn't go to course of preventative chemotherapy and now in early stages of that treatment. So that we've King Charles, all of it going on. So there you go. Breaking news. Wow. Um, leave the woman alone. Not to anyone here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not, not yeah, at I'm you saying. guys watching. Yeah. yeah but I'm just saying. The world. Yeah, I will say like on the human level, I mean, like, Mm -hmm. again, as much as the versions that they present to us always seem like a sweetheart and was Mm -hmm. always uh, always seemed like so just kind and poised and all that. And and that's, you know, that's someone's those are that's three little someone's mom. Yeah. And and it's like that's yeah, like, you know, sending love to her as a human being. And then the the outside conversations, which we can have another time. You know, I've talked about this a lot with with Nikki because, you know, he's he is. He is half English. Um, That's right. And, he and, bends and half a knee. Yeah. He bends half the knee, and w- and with my mother too, because she's a big Anglophile, loves the Royals, all that, loves the history and Diana and all mm. that stuff. Mm. And it's like they desperately. I hope this is a learning moment for their comms team and things like that. Like they desperately need to come to twenty twenty four, and because mm. something as simple as a, it's a health issue, and we'll disclose more when we're ready, could have dispelled a few weeks of nonsense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And the Photoshop thing and everything. That yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was trying to tell tell my barber this morning. I was like, stop with the conspiracy theories. Like, stop that. Like, yeah, it's not it, nothing it's, like that. She's not secretly it's, replaced. It's not a yep. whether or not he's cheating is up for them to know. Uh, I, it, yeah. it, you know, it's that's yeah. the type of thing where I'm with you. I'm know. with you. It, it, it's just uh, unfortunate yeah. what's sort of befallen that one house at this moment. Not to make it sound like a fantasy. Cursed, but right? Are Cursed, you'd like, say. He's, mm-hmm. you know, like in the past few years, the monarch's gone, mm-hmm. you know, her and Philip, and then Andrew is Andrew, and then Harry excommunicado, and then yeah. Charles has cancer, and now unfortunately Kate. It's Look, a lot. Yeah. Here, I, I'll I'll tune back in when uh, Meghan Markle is the queen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, is there a way to just maneuver <laughs> when, that now? When you go from USA characters welcome 
to the queen. That's the characters. Well, I love USA characters. Welcome references. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, there you it's go. Uh, so. Yeah, again, sending love to her, and we'll talk more about it. Um, I'm yeah. sure. Um, exactly. I'm exactly. glad. I'm glad that she got to do the statement, and that they've already talked about surgery and everything. And yeah, thanks for mm. letting us know in yeah, the uh, in the comments, everybody. And yeah, that's the that's second time right. now we've had un really unfortunate. Saddening breaking news on the show. So thanks for rolling hey, with us. That's what we do. We're live. Yeah. We're, we're covering news, world events, social events. We're here for that. But we're also here for a little bit of pop culture. Uh, and today, maybe a lot of it. A lot of a lot of it. A lot of it. Uh, we've had uh, quite a few trailers drop this week. It was a trailer week. You can tell this was the week circled on uh, PR firms calendars on their their whiteboard uh, <laughs> calendar with a with a with a marker. Uh, and uh, Alton, take us away where you want to go. Yeah. So we. Let's actually do some of the lighter ones first. I had thrown them in as an aside, but we touched on a yeah. few of these. I have not sure. yet seen the trailer for The Penguin, which is following up The Batman, and will be a part of that universe. I know it's out this morning, um, so that's yeah, coming. So. Um, okay. The yep. Matt Reeves Batman is continuing. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna, there are... I'm going to insert my Ben Affleck face for that. You're, ben Aff you're tuning out. <laughs> what was the last Batman you consumed like actively? Uh, Dark Knight Rises. Returns, rises, is it Dark Knight Rise. Rises? Yeah, Rise, rises, yeah. Yeah, yeah so 20, yeah. 2012. So you have been checked out of Batman since the Nolan trilogy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Indeed. Just wondering. Indeed. Just wondering what your frame of reference is for who yeah. Batman is. When I say Batman, who comes to your mind? Oh, uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, okay. Yeah. Perfect segue. And, 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 and Christian Bale. Christian Bale, too, yeah. I like the fair. Nolan Batmans. Yeah, I like the Nolan Batmans, too. And they're very, uh, they're, you know, they're culturally so important and they inform everything um but like you mentioned michael keaton beetlejuice beetlejuice which honestly mm. credit to them that's very clever to Love call it. the sequel beetlejuice beetlejuice um using the juice is loose as their movie tagline is okay. honestly hilarious to me <laughs> uh <laughs> it's such a okay. specific thing to put but i guess it okay. is something that character would say yeah um okay. winona Ryder returns Catherine o'hara returns yeah. Uh, Jenna Ortega Je joins. Jeffrey Jones the, does not. <laughs> he does not. And there's a funeral in the trailer. And I'm yeah. like, if they killed yeah. him, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he does not return. For those of you that do not know, I'll say this in the lightest way I can. Jeffrey Jones from Ferris Bueller, yeah. from Deadwood, yeah. lots Deadwood. of Amadeus. He, he's uh, great as an actor. He's, he's in so many things that people love. He was convicted of some uh, crimes of a sexual nature in the early 2000s, yeah. and uh, people yeah. have looked the other way on it a lot. Yeah. And it's, it wasn't rumored. It was <laughs> arrested, convicted, proved, everything. <laughs> so, yeah, not not yeah. returning. Yeah. So, yeah, but Beetlejuice, um, do you have a relationship with that first movie? I, I do. I saw it in theaters, man. I saw it in theaters. It freaked me out a little bit, but I loved it. And I am a yeah, always have been a Michael Keaton fan, man. Like I've always loved like like Multiplicity is one of my favorite movies. Okay, I like pizza. All right, I, I I love Michael Keaton. Glad that the Michael Keaton Renaissance came about because he was done though, man. Like he was one of the, the relics of the past. He wasn't getting roles. You weren't seeing him a lot. And then uh, you know, I think the other guys was one of the first times he kind of came back, at least on my radar screen. And mm -hmm. it, he was hilarious in that. And 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 I just I love where we're at with him. I love the Oscars stuff. Uh, I have never had the pleasure of meeting him, but I've I've been a, a couple friends of mine have, and they're like, he's the real deal. He's hilarious. He's engaging. Charismatic. This is a real deal. Um, and he's a stand up came from stand up too. By the way. I, I so wonder that I was going to ask with comics. like, yeah, he, Comedy stories, he's, yeah. he has that background and you know, the, the, everyone talks about it. Like the Mr. Mom's go play Batman. Like he had the first like really public casting backlash of we don't I, want this guy. I had pitched at Collider. I wanted to do a mini doc on that on when I was going to mm. call it like when Keaton was Batman. Because I think it's 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 one of the more interesting pop culture discussion moments um, that I wouldn't try to sneak past you in the intergenerational game because you know about it, you study it, but it's it shouldn't be overlooked at how much of a of a controversy that was, or the fact that uh, the dude from Moonlighting is in an action movie with Die Hard. Like I love those kind of mm -hmm. little wrinkles in pop culture time. I do too, and and you think we would have learned, but we still haven't. We choose not to learn so that people haven't. can slide in and out of these roles and that they yeah. want to stretch and have fun and do different things. And yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's great about that. You, you mentioned the other guys, uh, the founder 
uh, mm-hmm. the story of, uh, mm-hmm. of Croc and the founding of yeah. McDonald's. And um, yeah, he's he's a guy that you could tell takes his craft seriously and knows he's cool, but not in an, an annoying way. He's never arrogant. He just has mm-hmm. presence. And he returned to playing Batman, Bruce Wayne, and in The Flash, which is not a movie that I really enjoyed, but he's great sure. in it. And yeah, you know, I and he was also Batman in the deleted Batgirl movie, um, right. which we were robbed of a second Keaton performance of this era um, yeah. by David Zaslav and his backwards ass business practices. Um, but now Beetlejuice, and I, I feel like this is you know people love to get down on like it's just nostalgia, it's just nostalgia. They're showing you something you know and you eat it mm-hmm. up, and it's like yeah, yeah, okay, if you're boring, whatever. Um, but I like the fact that people like Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara get to a point in their career where they, they are allowing themselves the full circle moment, allowing themselves to have fun, allowing Mm -hmm. themselves to maybe not get over themselves in like a condescending way, but in a, you know, I would imagine that like Winona Ryder 10, 15 years ago, maybe wouldn't want to do this. You it know, wouldn't be like, allowed, by the way. It wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, her, she her was persona non grata. Yeah, exactly. Definitely blacklisted over something yeah. that now, in retrospect, is like so minute <laughs> that it's yeah. like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, Keaton, Keaton absolutely probably wouldn't have done this 10, 15 years ago. But you people get to that point, much like some of our Star Wars heroes did, mm-hmm. where they're like, okay, I think now I can look back on it with the perspective of a life well lived, and yeah. jump into it and say. I'm ready to have fun in the same way maybe older actors had fun with them back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm for it. And, and, and the, nost- the, the nostalgia discussion is always going to go on because it is present, right? And it is, we, we do get, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, Sussum's commentary on the, the Fall Guy, which was a TV show that I used to love referencing because no one would remember that show. Uh, but now yeah. here it is with Gosling and, and we all want new ideas. And I agree with that. I agree with those statements. I just, I always say you need to do it on a case-by-case basis and see what are the ideas present, right? This is what we dive mm-hmm. into so much on, on Force Center. Don't tell me that Star Wars is just about Star Wars just because the show has a character you knew from a movie. Judge it by the ideas. It could still fall flat. Uh, I know early reviews for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire are not coming in good. Uh, I just saw Afterlife and I actually enjoyed it more than I thought it would and I'm not a lifelong Ghostbusters fan. You just got to find the ideas in there and a lot of it is about generational change and I'm curious, you got the Jenna Ortega character, um, Michael Keaton would not have come back if it wasn't right. I absolutely believe that. I, I believe that about Catherine O'Hara too. And I believe that about Tim Burton, whose star has sometimes fallen, sometimes it rises again. Wednesday maybe brought him back up again. But Burton is an artist through and through. Uh, yeah. And and I I you just want to just trust the creators on this and just see. And I think the first trailer did a good job to say, hey, just see. Let's let's let's, let's follow us where we're going. Yeah, and I also am a Burton fan. I mean, much like many young emos and kids that like rock and roll and hot topic, like I was in there, man. I, I love, I, I love, especially that that early Burton. I was talking with a friend of the show and and guest of the show, Alex Backus, about Burton recently, and we were talking about what our favorites are and and what where we think it's going to go and what the direction is. And yeah, like everybody has that period. Everyone with a long arts career has that period where people say they fell off. It's not the same anymore. But and, but and I always love when they're like, oh yeah, why don't you take a fucking seat? Why don't you take a seat and and I'll remind you of what I do. I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah, years ago I once posted a video. I was just messing around. I didn't even have this set up, and I was just trying something. And someone put in the comments, "Well, they all can't be winners." And I'm not saying they were wrong, but I was just like, "Fuck off!" Like, "Fuck off!" I know what yeah. I'm doing. I'm trying some. And that happens with that. with music a lot, which you know we'll touch on again in our quick hits before we get to the two big ones. Um, but I think artists, especially like when they go on like big tours, like it's probably a lot of pressure and weird to like come up with the balance between hits and new material and stuff. And, and, it, mm-hmm. and that translates across all the arts. Like I, it sucks when you're at a concert for a big band and they play a newer track and the crowd sort of checks out. Like, it's like, come on, like you loved them because they were delivering new when that was new. Yeah. And so give them yeah. the grace to try and to stretch. And so yeah, I hope yeah. that this is Beetlejuice you know through and through but i also wouldn't mind it if it was 
modern and had a little bit of a spin and and that if Jen Ortega's character is very different from Lydia from the first mm -hmm, film mm -hmm, I would like mm -hmm. that yeah, we'll see. It's gonna, uh, you know, help Hot Topic sales, though. I bet you Hot Topic and oh, Box Launch yeah. and all those stores in the mall, they're gonna do well. Absolutely. Real quick, uh, got another breaking news thing sent to me. Uh, -oh. uh let me see. I'm asking. Is it for that a Scotty J Rose says Frozen Empire was ridiculously fun? No, but but okay. I've heard that I've heard the people that we like and hang with have enjoyed this movie. Yeah. But okay. then people that are on the outs, like people, you know, the media Who space. Expect? Yeah. don't really like it would you expect don't really like I got, it i got one friend who i trust on ghostbuster who liked afterlife and tweeted this one was a soulless sequel so we'll see but he also sometimes he and i disagree too so interesting interesting Funny uh, i haven't seen it present. yet anyways but... yeah sorry breaking news no it's all good uh thank you eli who's in the comments uh in a galaxy under his podcast account eli said another republican rep has just resigned from the house as of a few weeks from now, Eli Eli also added added some perspective. So as of a few weeks from now, uh, the GOP will have a single vote majority single in the vote House. Majority. Just in case you wanted to touch on it on air, Mike Who's, Gallagher. Okay, I'm looking up for that now. There's just so much. That's just uh, and there and there. The, it's it's bizarre to me, and I don't understand. I don't have an expert opinion on this one at all. But it's bizarre to me that a lot of them just aren't. Are, there aren't. Uh, <laughs> Dare I say they're aborting their term early? They're leaving, or now they're pulling the plug. They're jumping out. They're grabbing the parachute mid-term. I just find that fascinating. I'd love a documentary about that conspiracy. Me too. Real quick, also, we're mm -hmm. jumping all around today in this casual edition. I told you it was uh, looser. Maddie I, I, Gunner in the comments. Mm -hmm. Bridgeport legends hate breed call their set lists out every night at random. I could never. Now, that's that's mm -hmm. one part of the thought. But I'm honing in because Maddie Gunner, I don't know if you knew this. Mm -hmm. I am from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I did not know that Hate Breed was from Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm looking it up here and it says that they're from New Haven. I don't know. But it says origin Bridgeport. So that's interesting. So I guess Bridgeport, we just do it differently. I guess. Just do it differently. I don't know. Uh, Hate Breed, a lot of acoustic guitars, tambourines, yeah. harmonies. No? Yeah, okay. indeed. Okay. Uh, oh, I thought you were telling me. I was no. just agreeing with you. I was like, oh, maybe you know the makeup of the, of the instrumentation. I was making a stupid joke. I was making a <laughs> stupid joke. Uh, uh, Sean Rooms right. in the comments. Can Hank have an interview to get to, but have a great stream? You have a great interview. There you go. Good job. Good luck. Good job. Good job, Sean Room. Sean. Uh, all right. All right. Beetlejuice. So Beetlejuice down. Penguin mentioned. Uh, the other things, there's small things in the music world, since we're on a little bit of music track. Uh, Paramore had just covered Talking Heads, Burning Burn Down the House. Down now, the house. Great cover, by the way. We didn't really talk yeah. about it when it dropped. but I mean, come on. Hayley it's Williams perfect band. Do no yeah. wrong. She perfect can band do no for that wrong. song. Mm -hmm. Truly cannot. Uh, then we had uh, David Byrne announce that he's doing a cover of Hard Times from After Laughter, which I think is probably my favorite Paramore album. Hard to say. Um, but Hard Time is a great track, and uh, it's a great song for him, too. That'll be out on Record Store Day on 420. I don't know if they plan to put Record Store Day on 420, but that works out for lots of people. Wow. Um, and then Dua Lipa, uh -oh. my lord and savior, uh -oh. finally formally announced Dua Lipa 3, as we were calling it when it didn't have a name. Yeah. And that is uh, Radical Optimism, her new album. It's okay. coming out. And okay. uh, really excited for it. I already have the singles, as I showed the other day on Jill and Molly's show. I got the sing I got the singles on cassette. I got them on That's download. Fascinating I, I'm, to me. I'm ready. I'm excited. I love that. I love that. And yeah, Gaga's te uh, teasing her uh, what album number seven? I think. I think she's teasing Ooh. that. She's writing lyrics on a typewriter. She's uh, yeah. around town here. You know, uh, there's two people I want to run into uh, when I know they're in town: Lady Gaga and Clint Howard. Uh, he's always in town, but uh, I've seen him before. But I want to I want to have a conversation with Clint Howard one day and Gaga. Uh, that's good. Uh, I love that. David Byrne is, uh, yeah, he's uh, one of the great artists of all time. I think in our in the music world and in, in the world in general, and and, and a wonderfully weird cat too, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely pioneered these big ass suits, and we love him for it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What do you got? All right. What else we got? Oh, uh, the other small thing before we move into big ones is not small, but smaller. 
Alien Romulus, the new Alien movie, had its teaser trailer, and it looked so good. Been, I, 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 yeah, keep it's Sigourney in this one. What's going on? Where are we at with the timeline? It will be set between one and two. Okay. So set between the Sigourney, the okay. movies that everybody loves. James Three Cameron and four is when it starts it? No? to get controversial. Okay. okay. Yeah. James I, is I, not involved, but he saw I it. Saw, I saw four in theaters. Did you? I used, I used to see things in theaters all the time. Re new release films in theaters, you all the time. I, I Blockbuster movie movies worked Crazy. at a movie theater during that time. I could just go see any movie I wanted. That was that's the beauty of it. Maybe we'll both just go work in a theater now. It'd probably be more stable than, than the industry. Are right? they hiring? <laughs> yeah, right. We could open up our own theater like Kevin Smith. I, well, I, I, or yeah, uh, Q, go down to Q's theater here. Um, I actually. When I was, you know, I've got, I'm working this job right now, but when I was like, okay, it's time. I got to get some work in January and everything, which could very well be again. I did look at AMC because one of my all-time favorite jobs was working in the movie theater, but subtitle was cleaning the movie theaters. I was, it was relaxing. Everyone looks over you. They treat you like shit. So you don't, no one talks to you. Uh, they just throw things on mm. the ground in front of you and you get to just kind of be lost in your head. Listen to the, the music playing in the movie theater. I heard Faith Hill's This Kiss. 50 times a day didn't bother me <laughs> um and uh I, I i look went to amc and they don't just have that position you got to be prepared to work the candy work the i don't want that i just want to clean your trash man so maybe you and i will end up there you're like look i don't think you understand i want to haunt this theater mm -hmm. i don't want mm -hmm. to actively engage in the experience of this theater that's so weird and and we should talk about that sometime we should do like a uh, our shittier jobs episode because we have very different philosophies on that because if mm -hmm. i'm in that job where i'm yeah. the i'm the look the look down upon like skipped mm -hmm. over it starts to put me in my head and then i can't relax while cleaning me or doing things like that let's get into this for a second and then we'll get back sure. to alien romulus romulus Romulans. is it a is it a star trek crossover Romulans. no but i would be i would be down for that um if you are in a job that you feel people or looking down upon you, mm -hmm. you get in your head about it, and you get angry and you can't do the job. I'll do the job, but I I get I can't relax. It makes the day feel twice as long. I f I understand it. Uh, working in the security industry, I can guarantee you, every footstep you took, someone judged you. And I'm not even not yeah. even fully exact. Like maybe ten percent exaggeration. It it would be insane. The amount and not who not skater kids like like soccer moms would pull their cars over to make fun of you. I uh, had it happen so many times. So you get yeah. One time we were kicking someone out and he looked at me and he goes, "My I have pairs of jeans worth more than your life," and I I had to be pulled back because they almost chopped his head off with a pen. Like it 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 it, it I get you. So I get you. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, and then I that. find ways to like exert my power over people, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 get do Machiavellian schemes against customers and guests. It's great. It's great. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I don't do well with the being a being considered a peon. Um, but that's my shit to work out. No, but I, that's this is why I, I people around like, like scrimshaw will tell you, he said, you said, you're really good at this. Um, I am so goddamn good at being affable with those in those kind of service industries or those kind of jobs that are sometimes overlooked. Right. Like yeah. When when we're at the Anaheim, he said this to me at Anaheim celebration right? when we're, I was going in the check in, and every I made friends with every guard there because you know I come from that industry, and 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 he just was like I'm just amazed at, at every every time you you create this atmosphere around them, uh, around us that's just like this affability that <laughs> no one treated. It's and a I just, skill. I always do that. I always do that because because I've been in that because I had a, I tried to get a hot a lady order two hot dogs for me and I, I I took my too long and she was like do you even know what you're doing like like yeah. like I've been there I've been there. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah, if you don't treat especially service industry workers with the utmost respect, um, then I, I got nothing for you. I can't hang Same. with you. Like there's a there's a, a, a he he would like to be a prominent Star Wars YouTuber, but it's a a YouTuber who belittled a waitress when we were all in Anaheim, and none of us have ever forgotten it. You none give me that name off air. Ever forgotten? It. You can you guess. Can, you can give. You me can that. guess. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Is it the one Come I already? On is it the one I already, on already have a big problem with? Yeah. 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 Okay. In front of people the, the, we know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one in London, lo the London one I had problems with. Oh, no, 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 not him, not him, not him. 
Well, now I don't you think got me. That, I, was I don't think that one has the gall. I don't think that one has the gall to do it in a real way. Uh, but look, look at the comments. Look at, look at, look at the comments. The people, people freaking out. People, they know. Anyway, not, not anyway. to be all. Ugh, I'm not gonna say. I told, but like, I told you all it was a looser. It was yeah. a looser episode. But now you can it, tell me off air. It's absurd. It pisses people off. Because um, I have a, and, that, that, yeah. that other one. That other one. Yeah, I have a yeah. huge problem with. Very, very different in a very annoying way. Um, that that person yeah. might get might get the you've got words, Ken, one day, which yeah. is not Cal knows what I'm talking about. That's the that's the security. I'm going to need to be held back version of you. Yeah. 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 Respect that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, treat people with respect. You know, there's that saying of like, treat the janitor the same way you treat the CEO. Yeah. Uh, no, you should treat the janitor better than you treat the oh, CEO because yeah, they work harder and they pay more taxes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it gets mm -hmm. to the point where, uh, yeah, I, I really that that is a huge like even like dating thing. Like if they are if they don't like care to like look the waiter in the eye or like things like that or ask their name or like try to try to make light, you know, and just be be kind, then that's mm -hmm. a huge that's one of the bloodiest reddest flags um, in yeah, my I opinion. Agree. I agree. So I've distracted us fully today. This is me, Alden's kind of weak. No, I apologize. it's fine. I apologize. It is fine. We are loose. We're it's I mean, look, we're okay. we're doing breaking news now. We're yeah. jumping around. This is truly like if a radio station paid us to just do whatever we wanted. Um, sadly, we no longer live in that time. But no. uh, then the big things, the things that everybody probably wants us to talk about the most. Would you rather go to Star Wars or Hot D first? It's up to you. Let's go to Hot D and finish uh, with some Star Wars. Anyway, everyone loves a good uh, round of Hot D in the morning. Yeah, everybody loves Hot D. Um, we had a teaser trailer for this already, so it's mm -hmm. not the first look. But in a what is honestly a very cool move, the fact that they decided to release two trailers for the opposing sides of the conflict, both of which, to their credit, present that side as the protagonists which i think is part of yeah. the intelligence of the story and the elegance mm -hmm. of the story and why we've liked it so far the black trailer and the green trailer and mm -hmm. obviously we are biased to rhaenyra's side the black camp yeah um because how could we not be given some of the <laughs> events of season one but it it also they have you empathizing for the green camp and so we have our other YouTube channel, Casually Talk, where we're going to be talking about all this when the show ramps up. We just wanted to bring it here to discuss how we're feeling, and how we're mm -hmm. excited about it, because... Yeah. 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 Uh, look, I, I texted you. Yeah, you know, Green's making some good points. That's what I thought the trailer was good because of that. Am I rooting for Team Green in the end? No. No. But I've always... You know, Allison, I, I, I think they did a good job at... at, at making a lot of the things around her and about her empathetic where you understand a lot of what she's going through and the tough position she's in. I don't know if I love Otto Hightower, but I uh, can understand him a little bit too. So I love the trailer for that. I'm still team black and the trailer was great for them. Uh, but I thought that was great marketing. I agree. I think it was very smart. And it's something that we talked about with season one. Like, are they going to lean into the twilight of it all, you know, team Edward, team mm -hmm. Jacob or the Marvel civil war, you know, Iron Man yeah. cap, uh, Molly in our comments brings up matrix, you know, red pill, blue pill. People love a, a binary choice. <laughs> of choices. Their, they love, uh, they love camps as mm -hmm. we've proven in America yeah. time and time yeah. again with our systems. Yep. Uh, people will get involved in this and they will mm -hmm. um, want to stake their claim on their side of the argument. So I'm excited yeah. for it. I think, uh, this show has been very missed and I love, I love that because it has a less of a hold on my life than star Wars that when it's gone, I miss it. Mm. Um, and mm. then when it starts to ramp up, I forgot. Yeah. I forget how yeah. involved I am. Like you were joking. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. You're like, you're like, I forgot these people's names. I did. But then like, and it, which I don't think you're fully joking, but no, it's like, no. but, the, but the second that it's on though, you'll be back to being map Ken. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. No, I was thinking about his day. No, yeah, but no, I, I seriously, I, Allison Renera, I, I, yeah, I got it. I got it. Egg on, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I just, I had this like, wait a minute. Oh, what's the twin brothers' names? Arik and Eric. Oh, God, I don't remember. But also, I should point out, I was sitting in my barber today that I've gone to once a month for, I don't know, uh, for since two, 2016. And I was like, what's his name? No. <laughs> and his name's fair. on the store. 
<laughs> Richard. Oh, it's Richard. God, why, Richard. Did I, why am I forgetting? Really so maybe weird. there's just something going on inside my brain. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's a you problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One name we'll be looking at who is glimpsed. Glimpsed on the left of the screen, back uh, on the wall is, I'm assuming that is indeed, Craig and Stark. Back um, into the left. Yeah, the wall. Oh, my God. It was so exciting to see the wall. Very cool to see it again. And Craig and Stark, who is, you know, we don't want to spoil anything, but is one of the exciting characters of this time. And it'll be nice, I think, for a lot of people, especially people who were primarily fans of HBO's Game of Thrones, to see the North again, to see the most good guy coded house get involved mm -hmm. with this conflict and what, what they're like when it's not them, you know, being attacked and destroyed. And, you know, because yeah. the Starks had such a rough go of it for the entire run of game of Thrones. This is the Starks as an institution. No one questions them. Everybody accepts the way that they are and is like, yeah, 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 yeah. they'll never break a vow and they're incredibly powerful and we like them. And there yeah, they are. Love that. Uh, no, I, yeah, and I, I'm excited to see a little bit more of the world and the world's view on what's going on. I, I felt we we got some of that in season one, and again, I know I know this is a story about the Targaryens, but uh, I, I think some of my favorite stuff in that part of Fire and Blood and the book that covers this is how the small folk um, feel about it, right? So to start to get that and get outside the walls, I'm excited about that. And you know, I just love the wall. I just love the wall. I want to go hang out there. That's my that's my house. Outside of the having to go celibate, I think it would be one of the better posts in I'm Westeros. Okay. I'm okay. You're okay with that? Yeah. I'm <laughs> fucking my shell. I'm good. You're, <laughs> you're like, I am, I am satisfied enough to just man this wall forever. I'm good. Give, we, yeah. We'd give you command of like, what's the one that mm -hmm. Janos Link gets sent to? That's like, they say it's a ruin. Oh, uh, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah Greyguard. Yeah. Greyguard, yeah. See, I can't yeah. remember the castle's names. We'll give you we'll yeah. give ten command of Greyguard or Eastwatch by the sea, you know. You I don't. Like, up, I don't. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Time out. Time out. I, I, I. No, no, because I don't like the ocean. I'm not a big. I grew up near the ocean. I don't like the ocean. Oh, that's it interesting. Smells. So you don't it like it because it you grew up there. Me. I grew up. I grew up a mile from the beach. I can see it from my house. It's 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 smelly. It's sandy. Sand does. I always say this. You all made fun, not you, but we all made fun of Anakin. He's right, and you know he's right. So stop acting like he wasn't right. Uh, it gets everywhere, and it smells. The beach smells. Interesting. Did you feel that way when you were a child, or was it because of Didn't so like, much I, we, like, I don't mind going to the beach. It can be relaxing. There's some zen to it. Um, um, I don't mind all that every now and then. But it was like I, I grew up – like my community was like every weekend, grab the ATVs and head on out to the dunes, and that wasn't for me. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, there is a little bit of, I guess, uh, Bradley – is this true? Happy Gilmore 2? It's true, yeah. Happy Gilmore 2, my favorite Sandler movie. Really? Uh, yeah, I got yeah, I got Shadow Tower Commander vibes. Uh, Kumar's right. Good old Nikki Kumar's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm excited about that. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Uh, Happy Gilmore's my favorite Sandler movie. Uh, nice. Uh, you know, um, I just, uh, yeah, I want to go to my happy place. I love that. That's exciting. And I didn't know that was your favorite Sandler film. I yeah. That would be hard for me to choose. I... Uh, I, I think my first Sandler one that I watched a lot was Little Nicky. And then I, I was also a big, big daddy fan. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. And I was, you know, Sandler's part of my SNL era that I grew up watching, but wasn't my favorite era. So mm -hmm. um, I don't love a lot of, I, I don't mind Adam. Uh, by all accounts, a really nice dude. But um, Happy Gilmore, man. Love that film. Yeah. I called it a stuff. film. I called it a film. You should. You should. They're films. I've always said they 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 are films you go to the movies. Although I will say movie, but that's generally I never because you, you I don't say go to the cinema, you know. Cinema. That that that's a little too far for me. That's a little too cinema. English, but um yeah, I'm looking here so yeah, again, bouncing right. into the breaking news and out uh but looking here more at these GOT comments on House of the Dragon. Andy, yeah. great question. Where was Kristen Cole on January 6th? He has a lot to answer he, for. He was right there with Libs and TikTok. They were right there. I yep. absolutely know Kristen Cole was there. He pledged himself to Libs of TikTok in the same way mm -hmm. he pledged himself to Allison. A deeply emotionally <laughs> disturbed young woman <laughs> that needs a <laughs> that needs a soldier. <laughs> Too real, but real, but right. Yeah. Uh love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And and look, it's um 
where I'm kind of at with it all is is it's not a, a overwhelmed or there's too much stuff. I just I've reached this interesting point where uh, I can't wait to talk about it. And I I know once the show's going to start, I'm in. It's not that I'm not in now. The trailer's got me excited. I just have this compartmentalized kind of view of things. Like, what is that? June 16th, I'll be there. Until then, yeah. I'm going to go live life. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. And we'll do some deep dives and everything. Um, is there mm -hmm. anything from the trailers that jumps out to you? Before we jump over to uh, another just, June you know, release, just it, it, it just uh, Rhaenyra, you know, it's this, it's, it's a lesson of vengeance. I'm, I'm interested to track this, this lesson she goes through of, 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 of righteous, uh, of righteous justice, the search for righteous justice, and how do you lose that, or do you lose that? Um, and that's why I'm behind Team Black. I think they've been done wrong, um, but uh, you can lose that position fast. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're going to see, as many people know, there's an event called Blood and Cheese that happens. Um, and we're not going to tell you I what don't it even is. Remember it. I don't even remember it from the books. Oh, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll remember. I'm in a great spot, you'll... Alden. I'm in a great spot. I don't remember anything. Don't well, remember it's anything. coming down the pipeline and it's going to be so like, what's, offensively nasty. What's, what's Molly Damon's husband? She's still uh, she's married, right? Molly's married. It's some yeah. guy. Yeah. Andrew. I, I don't remember. remember. Yeah. Al, uh, Alistair Allen. Yeah. Oh, it's Alistair. Alistair yeah. Damone. Yeah. Alistair Damone. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. It's <laughs> Alistair Damon, even. Even Damon, D A E M. Damon Sweet Damon Line. Sweet about line about, about, yeah. yeah. Burning mm -hmm. down their house, bring it full circle. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting how Are I'm you? still so behind this guy, but he's going to do some disgusting things. Yep. He is. But yeah, what jumps out to you, man? For me, it's the the justifications, you know, sort of building on what you're talking about. So like mm -hmm. Rhaenyra is like what she's saying is factually correct information of this is what my father wanted. He held that belief until he was dead. And that is true. We know this to be true. We yeah. know what Allison heard and how it was twisted because of the position she's in. Then you get to their side, though, in the green trailer and Otto, you have Otto just looking so disgusted by everything mm -hmm. and he's like mm -hmm. you know they, they they don't care about anything anymore this is just about revenge for them and it's just like okay but like why do people seek revenge Otto? <laughs> yeah. what is yeah. the, what could motivate someone could it be i don't know anything you've done well, in the last yeah, two yeah, weeks yeah, like, no, yeah yeah it's, it's as if team green is like you know uh, the team black does not put country first all right they put party over country and <laughs> yeah. and it's just got this, you know, and, and, and there's some things you can take in that are like, yeah, OK, I understand where you're coming from. Again, that's why I look at Allison a lot. I, I am empathetic towards Allison and her life, the way she was used. But you yeah. we still do have choices in a general sense. Uh, I, I look at that way. And, and that's why tracking Allison's um, um, story is, 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 is one of my favorite things to do. And Olivia Cook's great. Olivia Cook is great and uh, absolutely enthralling as an actress and yeah. as a as a uh, human being to mm -hmm. be visually perceived that's the least horny uh, way i can say that yeah <laughs> look i've always i've always said that uh you ride the very 2024 modern lines of being a respectable but thirsty gentleman and i respect it very uh, very modern yeah you're great yeah and, and, and we got another break i've been tracking this into andrew just put this up in chat too bbc report blast and shooter reporting in moscow concert hall yeah there's something going on in moscow oh right God. now um so um i'm tracking that on cnn as well you know you and i picked a great day just to have loose pop culture fun i know we were like <laughs> you know what we're nerds like we i literally like pull back the curtain we literally we mm -hmm. talk about what we're gonna do obviously and we mm -hmm. were like you know what this might be the week where we always pepper in our pop culture stuff but let's just make it the focus and you know it's two big things people know us for these two big things and mm -hmm. uh, evidently mm -hmm. the news cycle had other plans yeah, um, that's right. yeah the, not, not much yeah. is known about it too i'm just i'm just tracking it uh three armed men in there uh many probably dead so a tragic scenario and and who knows you know i'm sure putin will, will blame Zelensky and all this stuff in it and and we got more things going so we'll watch yeah. it. thank you andrew though yes I, yeah thanks for the updates know. everybody we have a we have our own correspondence team just like the daily show and it's yep. all of you um last note on this and uh, vance and and yeah, uh, very excited at Damon and Eamon smack talking each other. Yeah, them putting in the trailers 
in the green trailer specifically of Eamon being like, mm -hmm, I'll mm -hmm. face my uncle if he, you know, if he wants to step up to me. Like, right. That's the, yeah, it's easy, really easy to say that when he's not around, but like that yeah. relationship of him being the tribute band to yeah. Damon yeah. in so many ways is one of my favorite things. And it, that inevitable clash, whether it's in season two or season three is going to be uh, pretty yeah, epic. Yeah. If you know anything about it, if you've read it, if not, don't spoil it for people because it could be, one of the more cinematic and huge things that they've put to screen on HBO. Yeah, I agree. Very excited for that. I agree. And mm -hmm. then also in June, which is in June, we have, I mean, we also have the bear season three. We also have Deadpool and Wolverine. So there's even more, but both of our subjects today are in June because on Disney plus we are going to have a little thing called star Wars colon the acolyte. And I am, I think as you are extremely excited, all the basic stuff like yeah. we'll get out of the way. Yeah. Yes, we're excited. Yes, we we love the Jedi. Yes, all these things. And again, go to go to the Force Center deep dive on on the teaser trailer um, on YouTube and mm -hmm. on the podcast mm -hmm. feed, where you guys mm -hmm. dove into so much of the stuff that that could be going on. Um, we'll talk about the ideas and things, but I guess broader, more so, just like in general for this show, new Star Wars gets announced this week or not announced, but unveiled. And did you, like me, have a little bit of the, I wish, I miss when this was more insular? You know? Like, just, people are so goddamn exhausting with this mm. stuff that I had to, there were several points where I had to reclaim my, no, nope, this is for me. Yeah, like, I went, but see, I went through that in 2019. Uh, with uh, yeah. the, the the double feature of Rise of Skywalker and, and Game of Thrones season eight, uh, and not even here to have discussions, even with Chad or anything about those. Even like I don't care anymore about discussions, positive or negative, about those things because I, I just remembered I got to, I, I I have to make it for me and, and those around me, right? And Force Center is a different kind of breed. It's a it's a job that we love doing, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I I I understand where you're coming from. I think I went through that a few years ago where. You know, um, uh, I, I I can turn a lot of it off. I still want to be aware of it. There's a lot of stuff around the discussion of the Acolyte that we know where it's coming from. We know who's behind it. And I don't even mean, mean that in a political or culture war sense. I've become just more exhausted by those who um, who are just old and out of touch <laughs> mm -hmm. with Star Wars and all these things that go forward. I, I You know, because I think there's a lot of folks who just, it isn't about, Oh, it's a diverse cast and I hate it. Or it's woke or those things. There's a, that's that's a giant category over here. But there's a lot of people because I know them, and they're just like, I don't know, it's better in '83. Stop, just stop. This isn't mm -hmm. for you. This isn't for you then. And yeah. uh, I, and I just I really am looking forward to the series and have been for a while. So yeah, my excitement. But anyway, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I understand where you're. Mm -hmm. just... Yeah, and I and I also I have periods of this, and then I'll have periods where I feel better about it and come back and it's, it has nothing to do with the acolyte like i i think that sometimes you know it's similar with like when andor came out like there was a lot of really frustrating and annoying bad faith garbage that was going around and even but it didn't doesn't affect the way i, I think about that show it doesn't affect mm -hmm, the fact mm -hmm. that i think that's a beautiful intelligent mm -hmm. rich experience of a television show so it has it's not dampening how i feel about acolyte at all it's just to the point where i sit back and i wonder Man, at what point did we let Pandora's box open up so much that it couldn't be undone? And have we all, the people that really get it and care and want to open this up and accept other viewpoints and bring in new fans and things, did we not lay down the law hard enough? Like, that's something that I think about, too. But I'll like, tell you why. It's I'll tell you why. But it's always been right, and and we say a lot. Yeah. But I I I I cannot tell you. I, I I keep mentioning. I'm slowly reading it. I'm not just mentioning. It. It's not like the only book on my shelf. The Cliff uh, Nestroff book about the the, the the history of comedy, culture wars, mm. cancellations, and everything that goes back. This traces it back to like the 1850s and 60s. It is just literally history repeats every 10 years on this stuff. And so everything yeah. that you and I might be exhausted with was at play in 1952 with rock music, rhythm and blues, uh, mm -hmm. disco in the 70s, and, and, and a lot of it being hijacked by those who would, uh, you know, uh, turn it into what it is. The disco sucks movement is, uh, on one hand, both simple, a, a style of music that you don't like. On the other hand, it is it is, it is bigotry at its finest. It, it is all of it at the same time. So that's why I say that to you of, like, I don't, 
I don't know if there was a point recently. Uh, I just think it's always been, and now it's louder. And which is not, I'm not the first to say that, right? I'm not insightful when I say that. Yeah, no, uh, really. that's just I think where it is. But I, like, yeah. I'm reading, I'm reading news articles from 1910 in this book that are word for word the same that you hear now. Yeah, it's I guess it is. It's a human animal thing. Which, mm-hmm. when you look at Star Wars of it all, because we are talking about Star Wars here, and we will give mm-hmm. some acolyte thoughts. And if anyone has acolyte questions, now's the time. This is not going to be a usual common thing where we do Star Wars on this show because we both do so much no. of it in other places. Yeah, um, but so go for it in the comments. But the uh, the way that people rewrite history is always really interesting, right? Like where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you have yeah. those. You have those yeah. be- best since best since the OT, and it's like okay, well, you guys were really unkind to both Empire and Jedi, specifically Jedi. Jedi totally. got dragged for being a huge step down from Empire in a lot of people's mm-hmm. minds, and then you oh. treated the prequels like garbage for the entire run, the entire run. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was a child for that, being told that there were only three good Star Wars movies, and mine sucked. Right, right. Um, and yes. yeah, so this notion that it was all perfect. From 77 to when Disney got it is horse shit. And we know it is. And it's just, it's so frustrating to see that people just get away with saying stuff, which, you know, is a huge, that's a huge thing that I'm working through is like, I hate when people get away with things, but it's a, sure. Yeah. Like we, I think we could all afford to be, as I've described it before, bastards for good faith. Like we, we are coming around to a point now where I think it is, becoming increasingly necessary to just look at some of these voices and just be like, you don't get it. We do. We're, we're not, you don't get to throw the gatekeeping at us. We're opening the gate for you. Just go, mm-hmm. just leave. If you don't like it, don't engage yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it. And, and some, some of them get it. And, and I, I had lunch with, with a, a pal, an old pal last week who said, you know what? I think I've just come to the realization that I'm just not a star Wars fan anymore. And it's like, that's, that's the thing. Do that. The go, run with that. <laughs> run yeah. with that. Move along. Uh, no, no need but for so you to stay. So many people won't. Yeah. No. Yeah. No need for you to stay, and many don't want you to stay. Let, let's 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 move along. Move it like a stormtrooper. Move along. Move along. Yeah. Move along. Yeah. And but they won't. Right. Not speaking yeah. of this friend, but but many of these people won't. Every day it's it's dead. Well, it's, Every day yeah. is I quit. Yeah. Every day it's I'm done. And more so than being frustrated with them, I'm frustrated with everybody that eats it up. Because yeah. we can all be like, "How? What a stupid video!" But it's got forty thousand views in two hours, so yeah, yeah. evidently, yeah. Nah, you know, yeah. it's working for some people. So that's more frustrating. Yeah. So yeah. that has unfortunately clouded a lot of the acolyte conversation. Um, got it. You, we brought it up like the most viewed, but also most disliked, and you have mm-hmm. publications irresponsibly publishing the oh, it's the most disliked. Yeah, why? By yeah, who? they never ask why. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. Let's use our brains. Let's call it what it is. Mm-hmm. We all know what's going on. There are people out there that know that a black non-binary person's leading this show. That Carrie Ann Moss is a Jedi. That there's an Asian Jedi Master. That it's like it, this is a queer woman running the show. Her wife's in it. Like, w- come on now. Um, I'm so tired of the like. I hate to use a term that maybe is like, I don't know how we feel about the term pussyfooting anymore, but like that, that is what it is. It's pussyfooting around. And the brand itself only stepped up really once in the last 10 years. And that was to defend Moses. And it's like more of that energy. Like, Mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. is that? Like we, we should have people out there being like, guess what? This is what we're doing. We're living now. And if you don't like it tough, Mm -hmm. um, but they're busy yeah. taking pictures at the Empire State Building, so I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm with you on it because there's there's always the discussions like not everything works, not everything's going to be perfectly executed. This show's going to have you know will stand up on its own, and and we haven't seen it yet, so it could be great, it could be not great, you know. And, and I always have those, you know, have a lot of friends in my life who are like, ah, oh, that one's that one's not pulling me in, and 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 I and I we always want to I always want to make sure we allow for that in our conversation of yeah, that's yes. that's not you, but it's 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 the bigger bad. The fact that this was. As dislike, I mean, it also got the most. I think they reported it got a, an insane amount of views as well. So it's like you know, it is what it is. But yeah, it, it, it's um, 
you just yeah you see it you know, when when screen junkies did the ghostbusters 2016 honest trailer like it was a, we had several meetings in the company about what we, what we were going to do and, and i think they disabled comments which was met with uproar and free free speech suppression and all that kind of stuff but we just we just knew what was going to be there and yeah. we get we had we wanted no time for it you know we wanted to make yeah. no time for it yeah um yeah it's yeah, frustrating, and, and that and that's what that it is, and, and we you know you knew you knew coming into this, you knew coming coming into this, which is fascinating because yeah. you know a lot of you know there's a lot of like she's pulling in she being Leslie Headland, she's pulling a lot of from the EU. It is new characters, it is a different timeline. It's outside the Skywalker saga technically, though I think to me everything's in the Skywalker saga. But uh, um, and you you just knew this was what was going to happen, and I think maybe that is, it, it, I don't want to speak for you, but that's sometimes what the exhausting thing is. Is you just, it can you just, be. You see the tidal wave coming, and you're like, here it is again. It can be, especially because we are so in it and we know how they mm -hmm, constantly mm -hmm. move the goalpost. Because you'll hear a lot of people, and I will say, in, 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 in the same way that you just clarified, yeah. you are allowed to dislike anything. I firmly believe that. I'm mm -hmm. on the record talking about what my least favorite ones are. Like, I'm just never going to be much of a Rogue One guy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The difference is, and you're never going to be a Legends person. Neither am I. You're never going to be a Thrawn guy. It's just the way it is. Um, that's a taste that's thing. Just that's a how we is. engage yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah, and uh, our buddy Ken Plume says in chat, it's a fundamental problem affecting discourse that algorithms only care about engagement and not quality of engagement. The algorithms reward outrage, not sincerity. First mm -hmm. discourse, yeah, yeah, to 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 a certain degree, I I, I really agree with that. Uh, I think it's 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 a math problem, and and the math doesn't really track what's being said, right? Humans have yeah. to do that. Um, yeah, and we're bad at that. Yeah, and I had a lot. Of, yeah, I had a lot of good business discussions the last couple of weeks, including that lunch I was talking about of just good algorithm conversations that have nothing to do with the, what's being said, but but that's 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 part of the problem, right? That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just uh, tracking. Yeah. engagement so yeah so it's like you can dislike anything but it's it's you know just present it or or it cannot be for you because i don't want to ever make it my personality and, and I, you guys are great about that and we just you know to have a viewpoint is one thing so you have people that have said i just want to get away from skywalker saga that's fine but you've also mm -hmm. had people raging about that and now here we are in a thing that is almost entirely new based off of the the you know more niche publishing initiative like this mm -hmm. is truly the thing that in a lot of ways people have been asking for but just like with so many of these things marvel's had this big time in their last couple of, uh, endeavors phase 4 in particular uh we wanted this give us new mm -hmm. and different okay here's new and different well not like that and yeah. we're not at a restaurant it is does not work that way we're not a Burger and King. Have it your way. Okay. No, no. Well, they don't even do that anymore. Now it's you Damn rule, it. which I don't yeah. like as much. I you know. rule is not as good as have it your way. Yeah. But you know, that what? impossible burger whopper made me poop bad. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> sorry, you yeah. didn't live up to your expectations. No, no, you did not no, rule that no, day. Did not rule. Did not rule. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm not taking away the fire. What you're saying. I just. Uh, yeah. I'm with you on it. It. It, it just. I. Th I think. Yeah. You just know it's coming. And you're like, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't all that being that. said, all yeah. that being said, though. Um, yeah. I love the trailer. Like, it's, it's, it's almost like I, because we're on the record with this in so many places and in so many ways, um, I just wanted to say the things that I know that we don't have room for yeah. in what yeah. we do. Like, yeah. Octo Radio is mostly one on one interviews with people. So it's like, doesn't really have its day. Mm -hmm. And Four Center is analytical thematic analysis. Analytical mm -hmm. analysis is redundant, but uh, you know what studies, I mean? Critical studies, Critical studies, yeah, scholarly approach. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not about this stuff either. But since anytime is a cultural thing, I just wanted to say that yeah. I don't claim these people. And there is a lot of like, oh, Star Wars fans, like they're the worst. And it's like, yeah, a lot of them are. Um, but I also think it's yeah. important to draw the line of these are not our people. They are appropriating a popular thing to corrupt spaces with horse shit. And, they, and yes. it is lumping them with uh, people that just don't like the sequels is dumb and reductive. Yes. Uh, you, you touched on uh, something that uh, I've spoken about before where I, because I saw it today in comments, and I think people mean this 
they mean this from a good point where they're like, oh, t- Star Wars fans are so toxic. That That is not true. That is yeah. not true. Uh, historically, have they had opinions and been a problem and they're all kind of comic book guys? You know, yes. That's a different discussion than what's going on. You are overlooking what is going on socially around these shows, the discussions around them, by just going, oh, toxic Star Wars fans again. That's that's not the truth. Um, mm-hmm. There's its own every fandom has its own kind of problem. I get it. Yeah. You can have those discussions. Yeah. I, I have I have friends who still won't watch Clone Wars. Uh, yeah. They still and and, and these are good uh, good hearted, smart, intelligent people who just have. And this to, is not just nerd pop culture. It's music. It's music. It's, it's, it's everything. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. there's always and, that, but and, like and that, this and is not that. And that's what I, when I when I the reason I I'm slowly reading this book. The reason I keep mentioning that Cliff Nesterhoff book is because that's what it goes into, and how how you know uh, you look at some of the newspaper articles describing rock and roll music in fight nineteen fifty three and fifty four savagery mm-hmm. jungle music. You know what it's talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what the, the, those critics are saying, and no one picked up on it there. And then 40, 50 years of pop culture history, no one looked back on that closely enough to be like, oh. I get it. <laughs> yep. I get what was going on uh, when rock music, rhythm, blues, uh, and all that stuff kind of hit the big uh, screen uh, or hit the big scene in the fifties. And 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 if you were just said, ah, you know, it's all toxic stuff. You're o- you're overlooking the deep seated cultural issue, uh, cultural issues at stake in the discussion. And 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 that's where I get when I hear, oh, Star Wars fans. Eh, fuck you. It's not Star yeah. Wars fans. It's not Star Wars fans. It's, it's not. It's these people. And anything that they choose to make the subject of their grift, because we've been to multiple celebrations, we've been to events, we've been to different things. And there is I, rarely have I felt as much communal love and kindness and joy as you do at some of these things. Um, some of our best friends mm-hmm. in our lives come together because of Star Wars. Our friendship primarily exists because of Star Wars. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of mm-hmm. how I first learned of you and you first learned of me, that's because of the stuff we both liked. Yeah. Um, so that notion is is garbage. And but there, but the the truth to it just requires okay. But but, but what are you, which fans? What are you yeah. talking about? How are they toxic? It's all these questions that need to be asked because something like this that is a beautiful trailer that is so fun and so cool and has so much to offer um, comes with all of this because we engage on this level and it's a double edged sword. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's just, it's been an interesting week for that, which these are, none of these are new thoughts. I've had them before. Um, yeah, yeah. but it's like, I, uh, yeah. And I just wish that there was more of a, and I get it. People are tired. People are exhausted and some people can't do this. They don't have the, the privilege of being a white passing cishet man on the internet where I can tell someone to go screw themselves and move on with my life. But if someone else does that, then the targeted harassment campaign can come their way. That is 100% true. That is 1,000% true. Um, we both know women in this space. We both know uh, queer people in this space, people of color in this space. It's They don't operate the same. They can't. Um, so there's that. But for those of us that can, it's time to just, you know, I think a little bit of like, let's let's grab our lightsabers. And I'm not saying swing first, but stand firm. Like, no, sorry, you're wrong. You're, yeah, what yeah. you're saying is wrong. What you're saying is in bad faith. We don't need to... The whole idea that everybody can have their take does not mean that everybody's take is valid. And that's been a huge thing. Um, In terms of the actual trailer, uh, and Mm -hmm. then we'll move on. Um, I mean, uh, all positive on both of our ends. I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah, no, it's the thing I've been most excited for everyone else to see since I left uh, London in in, in April of last year. It it, it was a little bit of... Similar footage, but different footage, so I won't even say it. And and uh, you know, um, I'm I'm also we got Maddie Gunners in chat. Maddie's trying to go in blind, so he doesn't want to know anything. Maddie, you're gonna have to mute. Okay, you're gonna have to mute. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my favorite footage of Celebration. It is, uh, but I really liked the trailer, and uh, it, it just I think there's gonna be some deep philosophical discussions to come out of it, but also I think just some a new kind of action to Star Wars that I, I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not someone who grew up loving Jedi stories. I liked more of the, the war, right? That's I've, I've even said that for years on Force Center. Um, I, I like the war. I like the politics. I like, I like, uh, being on the ground with the troops and the Jedi never, I never pulled me in deeper, mm-hmm. as, as deep as that stuff. You know, I almost saw a Han guy, not a Luke guy. Um, but I'm excited to explore it now with, with uh, Leslie Headland leading the charge. 
Me too. I, I've always uh, this is my preferred flavor. I you know my mm -hmm. fundamental cinematic experience for me as a kid is Attack of the Clones and and seeing the Jedi on Geonosis united, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the ending of this trailer and of the Celebration one of several heroes all igniting their blades at the same time like that that mm -hmm. scratched that itch that 22 year old itch now um yeah that's how math works i was six now i'm 28 yeah that's how that works um <laughs> and <laughs> i had to double check yeah. that um that itch that i've had for 22 years of these mythic larger than life um people literally wielding light to save the day uh is is something that i will never get over fully and that as core to who I am. And so I love that. I love seeing the paranoia and I love seeing a story interrogate things in cool ways. Cause when something exists this long, it has to ask mm -hmm. itself questions. That's why we both love last Jedi is mm -hmm. that if a lot of stuff gets accused right or wrong of being yay, star Wars, last Jedi was why star Wars. Um, mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. that? And, and a lot of stuff is that, and the bad batch has in a lot of ways has been a, well, why the clones? You know, mm -hmm. after we had them for so long, well, what about them? How do they function now? This is the Jedi. How do they function now when they are wounded and and something is cracking and they can't blame this big army or this big Sith Lord or this big thing? Like, it's way more personal and, and almost dirtier and gross in a way that there's there's some killer out there who has no regard for uh, this institution and what's that going to do to them? And I'm really excited about it. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, excited about that. Yeah, and some of my favorite images of of the trailer were uh, the Jedi Order um, taking damage. Uh, yeah, a, a Jedi starfighter crashing. Jedi pull out their lightsaber. That's cool. But then they're immediately pushed back by a dark force. It's 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 analyzing this, and and, and I'm excited for that. And uh, again, there's it just looked really cool, especially the stuff we saw at Celebration. Uh, mm -hmm. It just I'd love how this was shot, and um, excited to see that play out too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone tell Maddie Gunner he can unmute. If anybody has any questions about Acolyte, drop him in there. Maddie. I do have one. Uh, I have one Star Wars question that I starred earlier just to bring up because they also okay. announced uh, this marathon. The most important question of today, how deep into the Skywalker saga can your bum endure at a movie theater? Uh, May 3rd, they're re-releasing Phantom Menace. On May 4th, the entire saga in a marathon. I know you're not going to do it, but just theoretically... Um, which ones would you pick to see if oh, to you were going to plan a, a day for this? Yeah. It's and how theater. long do you think you could sit in a theater? Uh, about six minutes ago, you might have seen me wince. My back just went out, so not long. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I just turned and I heard her just, just shoot a pay, shooting pain went up my back. Um, uh, I'd love to see Phantom Menace again. I'm trying to make that happen. I know. I guess there's. A, I, I thought it was just one day, but I guess I have a week to see it in theaters or something like that. Uh, I love to see Phantom Menace in theaters. Um, maybe Jedi. I'm just trying to one for me trilogy, and and um, perhaps going back to Force Awakens to see in the theater. Uh, Rise mm -hmm. of Skywalker. I, I you know I love that film, and I just it's it had so much. I love it huge in in my face. But um, to go back almost ten years now to to relive Force Awakens is a crazy statement to say. Um, but I'd like to see all. Hear Ray's theme again for the first yeah. time. Yeah. But as far as getting through of it, yeah, about 40 minutes of Phantom Menace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the Boon to Eve classic, and you're like, damn, this go. race <laughs> this race is exhausting. <laughs> uh, I gotta go get a heat pad. Can I sit? Can I bring a red light therapy belt into this theater? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. I what I what I want to do, and I'll have to see when they started or whatever, see if this works, is I want to go to Barnes and Noble, have mm -hmm. a cup of coffee, then walk in with my ticket. I'll pay the full price for all nine. I don't give a shit. I'll go yeah. in, get my Attack of the Clones fix, right? So that's breakfast. Yeah. Then I want to go over to, you know, get some chicken tendies uh, and then come back, for, okay. come back for Jedi. Then okay. go but have a going, drink. You're leaving. You're, hold on. You're leaving. You're going back to your house? No, no, no. Just be out. You cannot go to the bathroom in a movie theater. That you can't do that. You can't be away. It's not a. That's not a, a away game. You got to go home for some of the chicken tendies. Come on, man. Bro, no, no, no. no. I don't mean. The, I don't mean I'm gonna the, have chicken tenders at the theater. Leave the theater. But even then, okay. Don't well, go home. I'm not gonna go your, home. This is your youth speaking. Yeah, I need the to. The older be you get, you, you have to plan how close you are to a bathroom, <laughs> a good bathroom. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, you said don't use a bathroom theater. I will never mm-hmm. get up during a film. I will not. That almost killed I, me in High Fidelity. I missed oh, the first, th- the last three minutes of High Fidelity. First time I saw the the, the film, and I had already loved the book because I I waited and uh, I, I I couldn't anymore, and I walked out like this, like crunched over, like Baba Joe from Force Awakens. No, can't. Don't do that. Show. Yeah, I can't do it. I will not leave. I don't care. I guess I'll piss myself one day, but it's not happening. Um, yeah. So Acolyte, exciting Star Wars re-release, exciting. Um, yeah. I I want to again say. I said a lot of angry, negative things. It is entirely yeah. about people. It is not about my love for Star Wars or anything because nah, I, nah, nah, I don't like nah, to nah, give I the I don't like to give the impression that like oh he's done with it or it's affecting his view on not at all. No, no, but, no. I certainly wasn't suggesting that too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. I, I yeah, I, I feel where you're coming from. I've I've disconnected enough, but I, but also I don't want to disconnect too far to not be aware of what these problems are, what we're really talking about. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alden of the yeah. summer bladder says Ken Bloom, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> look, at w- look, I'm telling you, Alden, at one point soon, age is going to crawl up and hit you right in the prostate. And it's it's real, man. That's so funny. Well, I uh, am avoiding any prostate conversations, I think, for another, what do they say, is that 40? So I have 12 years yeah. before I need to do yeah. prostate concerns? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Good. All right. Uh, Dylan Barry says, when does uh, Acolyte take place? A uh, hundred years before Phantom Menace. So there you go. Um, all right. Maddie, you survived it. You, you survived it, Maddie. Uh, let's wrap this up. Anything else uh, going on? No, we hit all that. Excited we for the Dua of Lipa record. I'm excited for you on the Dua, Dua, uh, Dua Lipa record. It's going to be good. Hell time. yeah. Uh, let's, let's round up the show here, Alden, and let's do the intergenera- intergenerational game. Intergenerational game. Uh, it's called, do you get this reference? We, we did this, uh, what did we do about two months ago? Yeah, I think about two months. I, I love silly stuff like this. We're celebrating our generational differences, celebrating our age differences. And you out there can play along. Eventually we'll formalize this into an official board game. I'm never doing a board game again, but maybe we will. Uh, <laughs> you and I have five questions, trivia, quotes, references. It's just each of us pulling from our, our, our youths. And seeing yeah. how well the other person knows it. Do you want to go first with one of your questions? Yeah. So let's start with some terminology stuff. I guess a lot of mine are terminology based, but just from different points of view. Okay. Ken, do you know what the term based means? I I I knew you were gonna ask this. I think I've struggled before. <sighs> I, I don't know what it means, and I don't know if it's negative or positive. I think I've seen different definitions of it, and it's also the context. Like we, This is the, the mid thing. Like Mid does not sound good, so I don't yeah. take it as good. But based, I don't know. That could be – you could be the base of your foundational correctness. I don't know. So I avoid using it. It, it would seem odd coming out of my mouth anyways. All of those glasses are based. I don't know. I don't know what it that means. I, I know. I know – I got, I got the reference. I hear it. I don't. I don't know if I understand it. Based is good. Based okay. is good. Mid mid is complicated because mid should just mean middle of the road, middling, average. Okay. But people have started to use it as an insult because they don't understand how to have a nuanced take. Um, but based has been around for a while, and it is some someone, usually a person, um, but it could also be a thing. So, like, if someone said, "Dude, Ken Napsok, dude, he's so based." Like that's mm-hmm. like just awesome, good, like forthright. I don't okay. knows knows who he is. Like thank you. He's just thank based, you. dependable. Thank you. you know, like thank that's you. thank you. Some sometimes people are just based, you know, based can thank opinion. Based, based, based opinion. can. Ken is very okay. based. See? So it is, but it is kind of like his foundational base. I'll take it as that. Yeah. Like it's a that's good sort of foundation. It's concrete. Ken's concrete. I'm gonna start that one. You right. Know, I'm going to look that, it up that, on that Urban Alden, Dictionary. That Alden, pure concrete. Pure concrete. What's the What's the one that people say? Uh, Teflon. Teflon. Teflon He's done. Te- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Teflon, scandal doesn't stick to you. Yeah. That so, I get. According to Urban Dictionary, based, a word you used when you agree with something or when you want to recognize someone for being themselves, i.e. courageous and unique, not caring what others think, uh, it, you know, it has 
some meta ironic like the opposite of cringe uh cringe the latter usage uh, coined by a rapper uh, so okay we're getting into like a bunch of offshoot versions but uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah yeah the opposite okay, originally used by rapper lil, lil b okay got that yeah when someone is concerned another definition when someone is concerned with doing their own thing and or spreading the truth unconcerned about anyone's reactions just okay. kind of kind of a kind of gangster kind of hardcore kind of cool got it okay okay i think i understand a little bit more hell yeah all right that was the first one now um we're gonna go to um my first question for you Alden. <laughs> molly real quick people have called me base before and i never really understood it till now i love that molly has just been taking this this description See, for years <laughs> yeah you just smile and nod um alden what was the big draw of mcdonald's mcdlt i know this one i know this one and i'll tell you why i know it well first of all i'll okay. say what it is uh okay. the mcdlt i can't remember necessarily what was on it but it was the one where they separated your burger into yes. like a double package hot and it cold. was like some stupid double yeah hot okay it's hot and cold is that the point of it your, yeah your lettuce ain't gonna get soggy with the mcdlt it's based <laughs> It's based. The McDLT is based. I only know this exists and I've seen a picture of it. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody look it up if you haven't seen it. It's a weird styrofoam, like two section wide. Yeah, it, just, it destroyed like, the earth every time you ordered it. It just was a ton of styrofoam. We had, uh, we had an obsession in high school with the McDonald's secret menu, which is a very internet thing of like things you can order that are not mm -hmm. on the menu that are usually kind of inappropriate um, to say. Um, and one of them uh was a <laughs> like what can i have a flap and dingling place like what is it? things like that like the one okay. that we would always order after school because our high school yeah. was uh, a block away from mcdonald's so we would just walk okay. over okay. and um oh okay. have the dick and balls <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep in mind i sounded like this at the time okay. Okay. so mine okay. would have been like can i have the dick and balls please you know i, I was still very adult thank you very much okay, okay. ours was the mcgang bang and Got it. the mcgang never, never had one and i mean that in every sense <laughs> it's when you take a double cheeseburger then you separate it at the middle right uh -huh. at the patties and then right. you insert a whole mcchicken bread and everything a whole mcchicken uh -huh. and then close it back up effectively <laughs> making it bun cheese patty bun mayo chicken bun patty bun you can also That's throw in fries if you want that's an abomination to our Lord and Savior. Like what? If you do it at Wendy's, it? it's called a slutty Wendy. Same concept. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah. so in that, there was some understanding of like dumb gimmick McDonald's things that they've actually done. And that's yeah. how I know what the big deal to you is. Okay. Okay. Love that. I'll go to my next question and then we'll, we'll alternate like that. Um, Alden, going back to 1981, uh, we were talking about the good, royal family. Good year. <laughs> Good, good year. Um, uh, we're going back. Uh, we had we're talking about the royal family earlier. There were two big weddings in 1981: Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer, and Luke and Laura. Their wedding brought in 30 million viewers. On what program? Man, I was with you on the Charles and Diana, and then you said Luke and Laura, and I was like, "Who are these white people?" Who are these? Who are Correct. Are Correct. Who are these people? Correct. Um, the wedding of Luke and Laura was perhaps, in fact, it was so popular, Lady Diana sent them a gift. Wow. So, so, all right. Context question. Are Luke yeah. and Laura characters or real people? Characters. I'll give you that. They're characters. Oh, they're characters. Okay. Well, I, I'll say I don't know. Um, okay. But I, I'm going to guess one of those, I don't know, major sitcoms. Like, was this a... Good guess. It was good. Yeah. It was General Hospital. General Hospital. Oh, soap wedding. Luke and Laura. Uh, he had an Art Garfunkel, uh, 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 curly uh, mop of a haircut, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was the wedding of our time. Wedding of our time. Oh. A at the same year, Princess Di and uh, uh, and Prince Charles, uh, which was also the wedding of our time. Um, so that was did this did General Hospital in a way invent with that context of 80, 81, You know, that's a mm -hmm, that's a. Mm -hmm good ways away now did they invent like shipping culture if people were so into this like because is it, this before it, sam and diane it's yeah it, well, yeah 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 which when cheers started with 80 82 i would say that's an interesting because i know what you're you're getting at 
I don't remember any big pop culture weddings before that. Someone might remind me a sitcom or something like that. But you know, remember it wasn't two eighty one. Uh, it wasn't you know you're going back to the late sixties where you still weren't allowed to show married couples in the same bed on TV. Where you know I love Lucy when Lucy for real gets pregnant. They 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 you know it was a, a moral outrage uh, to show that in any fashion on the TV show. Um, so. Uh, you're not, I, this, what might've been one of the first weddings. Yeah. And the first time that people were like, these two characters that don't exist, I really want them to be together. Right. Which yeah, yeah, now, no, it, now yeah, Sam yeah. and Diane is sort of the touchstone for that, in, at least in yeah. television. Um, yeah. and then of course, friends has theirs. How I met your mother has theirs. It's all over sci-fi fantasy. Um, yeah. That's just that's a people fundamentally yeah. want people to bang. They, that's something culture. that we know. You, you need to write the doc on ship culture. Uh, that's my second question, but you got one for me next. Yes, indeed. Do you know what it means to say he's him or she's her or they're them? Well, other than just, you know, uh, acknowledging and respecting how people want to be identified as I'll start there. I know yes. I understand that. I'm down with that. Um, but. If is this kind of a, a phrase? It is a description for someone. What what, what is slang? It? Yeah, it's a slang, slang phrase. So let's say I, we were at a okay. concert. Yeah, give me context. And yeah, let's say we're at a concert, right? Whatever yeah. band you'd like. And okay. in the middle of this, in the middle of this concert, you know, song happens, and then a guitar solo is happening, and we're talking about the guitar player, and I'm like, he's him. Yeah, I was going to say it's someone who is singular. It's someone who is, understands themselves. It is someone like like he's him, man. Like that's the guy, the guitar player up there. That's the yes. guy. Absolutely. That's look at absolutely. that. He's bass, right? Like yeah. he's, he's based. Um, not based. him and based, or her and based. Them and based. like, there's a lot of crossover there. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get that one. I have never really heard it in context. N Nikki Kumar has not said that to me once. In the time that I've known him, and I'm disappointed. But uh, yeah, that's I get that. Yeah. So yeah. if we're watching Slash at the Oscars, show up for the I'm um, just Ken song. You're like, hi, ah, he's, he's him. him. Ryan Gosling is also him, you know. And yeah. then you get variations like him, him Robinson, and Himothy Chalamet. Like, um, got it, got it, got it. Himmy Neutron. Like, it, it, it really is the difference between the him stuff and the base stuff is that based can just be based can fit the everyman. You could have a based opinion, right, 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 right. But this dude. is like, yeah, him is like the pinnacle of the Got of it. the field. Got so, it. like, I don't know who the him of what we do would be. Maybe like, I don't know, Dan Rather. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, Jerry, uh, right the, now, Jerry, Jerry the Cannon Junkie. Jerry the Cannon Junkie is him. He's him. He's, He's him, him as being as being a good dad. He is yeah. the him of dads. But yeah, I mean, like. uh you go to wrestling, whoever the guy is at any given moment, he's him. Becky Lynch, got it. Becky Lynch, Did she's him. Her? Okay. She's him and her. Um, uh, got it. Okay. That one makes a lot of sense. Love that. I got it. I got yeah. it. I feel good about that. Okay. Next one from you. So the next one, can you tell me what this quote is from? Comments, relax. I'm going to read this quote. Uh, you're gonna I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to bring up the rundown, so I'm not even going to look at the comments. Beautiful. This quote, water earth fire air long ago the four nations lived together in harmony then everything changed when the fire nation attacked okay if you've ever been to an earth wind and fire concert this is how they <laughs> start the concert <laughs> this is how the this is how they start the concert uh, i wish <laughs> i'm gonna say yeah that is that is the first incarnation of avatar the last airbender correct yes Got it. That's how. That's right before the theme music. Every time. I've hung. I've hung out with Andres Cabrera enough, to, all right, to know these things. That rocks. I've never yeah, watched it. Like Fire Nation, and you know, it's got its connections to Star Wars with Filoni mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. first season, and that was, got I it. think, the last job he did before Clone Wars. And yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's been right. big. I, yeah. And, My friends were working down the hall from him uh, at that time at Comedy Central. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, love that. Okay. Good question. All right. All right. Rounding up the corner here. All right. Um, where, oh, here we go. Alden, you might know that Puck got kicked out of the real world house in season three, mm. but he wasn't the first. Okay. Do you remember who got kicked out of a real world house first? And I'll give you a hint. It was in season two. 
bold of you to assume that I know who Puck is, even for the preface <laughs> of this question. <laughs> All right, who is Puck? So Who's Puck? I don't know, but there was a you Puck don't know who Puck show, is. Glee, oh my god! And that actor uh, did some not okay things. Uh, yeah. Now, real world season two. <laughs> let me tell you right now that I said this when we were on with Jill and Molly and, and Sean and Alex. I've never seen a single episode of Survivor or Real World That's or right. any of these That's shows. Right. Um, but I will throw my guess in and I will say Mike the Miz Mizanin because he's the only <laughs> competitor I know no. of. No, yeah. because he appeared in season 10 back to New York. Oh, Duh. Okay. Duh. <laughs> I don't um, know the war. So the answer is comedian David Edwards. He was 21 at the time. He was in season two Ooh. and he did bad stuff and they evicted him from the house. Puck, though, th I just assumed that Puck was big enough. That's the point of this game. That's amazing. Puck in season three, San Francisco, there was uh, uh, Pedro Zamora was uh, one of the other housemates, and he was uh, openly gay. I think he uh, had HIV at the time, and that was huge. That was giant to be like, this is on our TV screen, right? Because it was new for a lot of us. It was a big yeah. watershed moment. Puck and him didn't get along. Not for necessarily all the bad, super deep cultural reasons, just Puck was a punk. He was, uh, uh, you know, dyed blonde, Billy Idol looking, snot blown out of his nose, a-hole, but the, the, the cute girl, the house had a thing for him, and the, all of us were like, no, no, not Puck. Uh, and eventually he just kind of, it just boiled over and they evicted him from the house, and it was big news. When he got evicted from the house, it was big news. Big news. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. There you go. What Michael McCarcel says, Puck is a trickster. False and tricksy. Uh, fascinating. Okay, I stand corrected. The, the David Edwards is a deep, deep cut, but Puck, I got it. All right. Uh, I got two left. You got a couple left here, too. I'll go next. Uh, Alden, the Bicycle Man was a very special, and I capitalize that, the Bicycle Man was a very special two-part episode of Different Strokes that taught us what? And I'll just take a general answer here. I don't know how to phrase this. I know the answer because it's in a documentary. <laughs> oh, it is? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's in a documentary. Fascinating. Uh, fascinating. This is the episode that has a child molester in it. Correct. And Correct. so that's, I haven't seen it, but I know it exists. It's mm -hmm. the episode where they, or someone tries to, like a pedophile tries to go after Gary Coleman. Correct. And it, it is, it is, and his buddy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The at least I can find the name of the documentary, but it's, it was a documentary about like Hollywood. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 So a 2014 documentary called an open secret was exposing uh, child yeah. abuse in the film industry. And they brought this up. So, um, yeah, so this was 1980, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. 83, 83, yep. this episode comes 80, out. And yep. Yep. 83 Gordon jump played him. Gordon jump from uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. He was a, a Maytag commercial repairman guy. So uh, he was trusted too. That was, it was meta. He was trusted. Mm -hmm. It's big. Okay. But I'm glad you know it. Cause it's an important lesson. <laughs> it's an important lesson, yeah. Alden, but we all learned it. Uh, different strokes had a lot of on a very special episode. Yeah. What a, what a like, insane. I mean, I guess there was that whole era of like, as they should, you know, let, let's ta yeah. tackle some real issues with what we're doing. But I guess in 83, yeah. that was probably insane. It was insane. Know? Yeah. This was the era of kids on milk cartons and this and that. And yeah, they had the big Nancy Reagan, uh, just, just say no to drugs, drug war episode too. Uh, they hit yeah. all the, uh, or is there, all right, good question. Good answer. Uh, what do you, uh, what do you got for me next? So this one, this one, I, I have more confidence across generations but was definitely huge for my age group when it went down. Are you familiar with, the comments are about to light up, are you familiar with Harambe? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. That's not too long ago, right? That's like 10 years or so ago? It was a while. It was a, it was, a, it was definitely when I was in, right after... Harambe was, okay, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, so it was, sure it was after high school for me. It was, it was 2016. Yeah, okay, so it's not super long ago. But I, I'm having, I remember, I couldn't remember my barber's name this morning and his name's on the shop wall. Um, um, see, I'm confused because I want to, I want to, don't, I, wanna, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to step on anything. I'm either thinking of some sort of like 
gorilla or ape in a zoo, or I'm thinking of some artist that got naked on a street. <laughs> and I can't remember which one is which. Make your choice. <laughs> I go naked on a street. It's the gorilla. It's the gorilla. God, who's the Harambe naked on the street? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's naked on the street? Harambe is the gorilla that when the child fell into his enclosure, uh, they killed yes. him. Because yes, he, like, that's right. They thought maybe he would attack the kid. Yeah, you're right. Damn family. So Harambe was a big, big thing for people in my age group as an internet meme. Like, yeah, yeah it was everywhere. It was a national story, but like, <laughs> it was... Like we're literally the comments. Dick's out for yeah, the comment. <laughs> you got like, you got rest, the in power, power, rest in power. I didn't I didn't look at that. Uh he was killed the day after since uh his birthday. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I see I see I do remember it, but uh, you know, th this is the yeah. I I'm alive for it, but like yeah. the age difference, it was a it was a quizzical thing on the side, but for you and your friends, it was the thing. I love we that. That's a great question. Matty Gunner brings this up. Didn't Harambe run for president? You joke, but that that comes from the fact that people wrote his name in a lot. Yeah, that that's what someone said here in our uh, chat. Uh, someone pointed out yeah. like eleven thousand people voted for him or something 11, like that. Eleven thousand votes, Dylan Berry writes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dylan. That's <laughs> uh, and there's a popular like stupid uh, conspiracy theory that I love, which is that we splintered the timeline by killing Harambe, and so had Harambe lived. Trump okay. would not have won, okay. and things you know, right. things wouldn't have gone the way they he went. He took the votes, but it, this, it was him. this it wasn't a third party candidate. It was Harambe. It was Harambe, yeah, it dicks out for Harambe became a whole thing, <laughs> and like the whole notion that like this gorilla <laughs> got killed simply for being a gorilla. Oh I'm, yeah, no, yeah, I definitely remember the story now, and yeah, yeah, upset at the family, not the not even the kid, the family. Uh, yeah. All right, that's spectacular. All right, I'll do my final one because I think you're going to get it. It's simple, but uh, 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 I, what I love about the Harambe one is again, it's 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 that it, to me it was like what are, the kids are doing something on the internet, mm -hmm. you know? Because I was busy working on the internet, so I was like, what are the kid the kids are doing something weird? I don't know. God bless you and your kids. Um, all right, final question. I always want to ask one from the world of comedy and just a reference that was very clear to me in high school. Uh, but you might know it because you study pop culture. You know this stuff, Alden. But uh, now's the time on Sprockets when we do what? I have no clue, Ken. Really? I have no idea. The word Sprockets is familiar to me. Sprockets. Wow. But like, okay. Okay. I do not know. Uh, it's uh, the, Now's the time on Sprockets when we dance. It was oh, the no. end of every uh, Sprocket sketch with Mike Myers. Boom. Okay. Boom. Mm -hmm. Oh, boom, boom, Mike boom, boom, Myers. Boom, boom. Okay. No. Okay. Well, so this is Mike Myers, still in Canada? Like, like no, this is on SNL. This is on SNL. Knows. On SNL, Sprockets. He played okay. like a, a like a East German, uh, you know, uh, emo artist. You know, kind of just wow. kind of uh, uh, glasses. He he kind of looked like a tot from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, but without the hat. And yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, touch my monkey, touch my monkey. Like that. You've never heard that either. Yeah. No, I don't think wow. so. I, I, it's like with Mike Myers, it's like if it's not Wayne's World, like I don't think his characters sure. get included as much in the. Yeah, yeah, no, because I, I was like, oh, do I do a Wayne's? But it's like I think everyone knows Wayne's World, the movies, yeah. and, I, and I love those movies. Yeah, Sprockets, man. Mike yeah. Myers was a beast. You know what? At the time, Mike Myers, he was him. He was him. I love he Mike Myers. Him. I really I still like. like I still like Myers, and there's some things about him and how he how he acted. Sometimes he, there's a lot of that stuff too. I've heard that, but um, uh, and 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 yeah, I I tried to watch his show. I was really excited for that Netflix show he had because he had the Pentaverit or whatever because he had mentioned that in in So I Married an Axe Murder. It was like a one a one a running joke that showed up a lot of Mike Myers stuff, and I was really excited for the show. It didn't hit for me, um, but I I still love Mike 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 Mike, Mike was that guy. He and Dana Carvey were my guys. That guy's cool. I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh okay the last one for you okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a list of a couple different word groupings and you tell me what they refer to what do these words refer to we have red blue and yellow gold silver and crystal ruby sapphire and emerald and then diamond pearl and platinum Oh my god! Are these bitcoins? Um, is, this crypto? is this crypto? I can promise it's not crypto. Nor <laughs> I can also promise I will never bring up crypto. <laughs> say again. Say again. Say again. So it's red, blue, and yellow. 
was first. Then gold, and these... silver, and crystal. These are all these are all the names of big waves of something. Then ruby, sapphire, and emerald. Then diamond, pearl, and platinum. Big waves of something. Big clue. Okay. Um, Pokemon cards? Pokemon games. So you're very oh, close. Close very enough. Good. good shit. That, yeah, red, red, blue, <laughs> and yellow. So red and blue are the original Pokemon games as released in the States. They were uh, okay. red and blue. Okay. And blue. Okay. Then okay. yellow is the special edition of those. Gold and silver. Crystal is a special edition of those. Ruby, sapphire. This is Ruby, sapphire, emerald is like me in elementary school that this was mine for real for real and then diamond pearl platinum was uh that middle school high school era for me got it um nintendo ds i almost went magic the gathering but i i've hung around mark ellis enough to know that i've not heard those terms but i've hung out around cody hall and christian rivacaba enough to know that might have something to do with pokemon okay now i get like 75 percent for the, oh, yeah, you absolutely do. You got there. Just for the record, I would like to say the reason I stopped there is because mm-hmm. after that is when I started to fall off a little bit, not out of dislike, but just because of time and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it gets weird. So, like, after that, we have Crystal, and then they do some remakes in there as well. Then we get to Black and White, okay? Then they did X and Y, and that's when I knew that I was officially no mm. longer child yeah okay so if we brought a gen z on they could stump you with maybe with that going forward they could stump me with like x and y sun and moon uh what what is this uh, let's go pikachu let's go eevee <laughs> the the, the this, one that's coming up now is pokemon legends z z a z dash yeah see that's like for like like for me with like transformer or gi joe toys where I know when it's like, oh, it's it's the environmental Joe. It's like, oh, I was out, but not that I'm out on the environment, but I was out when they started the Eco Joes or whatever. <laughs> like I don't remember that. <laughs> Eco like, Joes. Or be, people are like, oh, do you like Beast Wars? No, I did not watch Transformers Beast Wars. I got it. I get you. Got it. it we it, did it. It enables us to like. I love like inner nerd superiority where it's like, it's all so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I love this is, uh, we're going to put this on the box when we release this game as a VHS segment. Uh, Nikki Kumar, this is my favorite segment. Never stop doing this. <laughs> this is, yeah, it's it's consistently fun. We'll, we'll do it. it well, back. you know, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to have to open it us up too. We'll, we'll uh, this will, this will become our down, quite frankly. This will, <laughs> this will be our yeah. down. We'll just do an entire channel on the intergenerational game. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, great stuff. Good stuff. You know, you, you, you're right there in some of that stuff, buddy. I, uh, you know, yeah, uh, get close. Get you know close. who the bicycle man is. That's all. That's the most important one. That's the most important one. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did. Uh, as Eli points out, Hillary knew, or more Hillary accurately, knew. her yeah. staff knew. Yeah, as many people yeah. joke, including me, the mm-hmm. moment that Hillary lost was when she said, Pokemon, go to the polls. That was when she finally... That was wow. when she finally uh, lost the youth. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. I've said before, like, if, if there was a Hillary Clinton biopic, a yeah. seriously made biopic, and they would probably call it, like, Rodham, because they always love to, like, yeah, yeah. pick Rodham. the middle name. Or, yeah. The story of Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yeah. yeah. And there would be a moment toward the end of the second act when things start to crumble, when it would be a bunch of interns, and they would all be looking at their apps, and they would be like, the Pokemon quote didn't hit. The Pokemon didn't quote hit. didn't play. Didn't play. We, we're, we're, it's dipping. It's dipping. We're Pokemon, crashing. Yeah, that Pokemon quote is mid. Um, it's mid. In a sense that I think it is. Uh, beautiful stuff, buddy. Beautiful stuff. Uh, I forgot. I had the homework this week of doing the Pop Rock and Word of Wisdom. And uh, I just didn't do it. I forgot. Uh, just that's on me. Okay, I apologize to all of you. So all okay. of you out there, pick your favorite song lyric and just imagine it in your head right now. Uh, Pop Rocket Radio is on a little bit of a hiatus. I'll be back after I get back from Boston because that's right. I'll be in Boston doing comedy with Mr. Mark Ellis, April 6th in uh, Boston at the Rockwell. Also on April 3rd, we'll be on the show with Justine Marino at Laugh Boston. She's headlining. I'll be hosting the show, Ellis featuring. Uh, a lot of fun. So come on out if you're in the area and join us. Ticket information on my website. And if you're local, big show at Flappers on Easter night. Come hunt for Easter eggs on the comedy stage. I'll be there. Uh, that's it. Alden from my side. Uh, you, you put out some Octo stuff. You just had some interviews in Octo, right? Yeah. Octo Radio is back. We had Mark Bernardin on. We had, uh, talking about his new Mace Windu comic. We had, uh, Kian Tran, 
who's the cinematographer for Ahsoka, talking about the making of Ahsoka and all the behind the scenes secrets. We had uh, Isabella Kalyan, who is the editor in chief of Stargirl magazine, the new Star Wars fan mag that's out there right now, which is very, very good. Um, and you should check out. It's like 100 pages. And they're doing a monthly, very old school, very cool. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, so you can look forward to more interviews and things that are happening. Um, find me personally at that Alden Diaz, T H A T A L D N D I Z. Follow anytime at any time on air on all, all right. your platforms. A lot of fun, a lot of stuff going on in the world today. Uh, stay engaged, stay plugged in, uh, look around you and connect with uh, other people. But also, watch out for the bicycle man. We'll see you next time here on Anytime.